Is San Jose too expensive even with that awesome job offer? Does the cost of living make sense for your situation? Let's talk about it. Today I'm gonna to cover the cost of living in San Jose as an update to the video I did in 2020. We're gonna talk about 2021 housing numbers, rental numbers, and get into purchase price specifics. I want you to stick to the end of the video. I'm gonna talk about how people survive in San Jose and some tips I have for you to make it and not just make it, but thrive in this area. It's one of the most common questions I get, so we're gonna talk about that. So looking at my screen here, you see that the population in San Jose has actually started to go down a little bit. In the 2020 video, I said that there was about a 9% increase in population from 2010, but we are actually seeing a little bit less than that. We're now only up about 6.7% from 2010 because some people did leave. And that happened during the pandemic and it also just started to happen because the cost of living in California it is expensive. So the average salary in San Jose, according to Point to Home site, is about 142,632. Now in 2020, I reported 133,000, so that's up a little bit. Not exactly sure the date time difference between those, but what I have here is from payscale.com, a range of different salaries that are really common in the San Jose area. So a software engineer on average is making 118,000 up to 150,000, and a senior software engineer up to 181,000. As you can see, there's a lot of different ranges, but these are some of the most popular jobs in San Jose. So yes, the incomes in San Jose are really good, but does it make sense to actually afford to live here? Here is a little bit an idea of the demographics of this area. If we look at this black line, it is looking at the San Jose, Santa Clara, Sunnyvale metro areas, which is where most people live for these high-tech companies that we have. If you look at this, 53% of people in that area make over $100,000 a year. So it is really common to have big incomes in this area. Now, I think this chart is actually looking at one single person job, but many households in San Jose area are actually dual income. So that's another factor to consider. So the cost of living in San Jose is definitely more expensive than many other areas. One of the biggest is energy bills. It's 45% higher than the national average, primarily due to our power or PG&E electric bill, as well as water, which are both expensive because California doesn't have a lot of water and tends to be a drought state quite often. So those items are valuable and very expensive. Though a lot of homes do put on solar to help the power cost. Now housing, we all know housing is really expensive and it is 53% above the national average. So let's take a quick snapshot here of a rental because if you're moving from out of the area, the first place you're probably gonna land is a rental. In 2020, I said a two bedroom condo or apartment was renting about $3,000 a month. That still applies today. Here's a new updated snapshot of Zillow. You see this three bedroom, two bath home renting for $4,000 a month. It actually says condo, which I'm not quite sure why that is, but this is a home in San Jose and actually in Almaden Valley. Here is a one bedroom downtown apartment for 24.25 and down here you see a two bedroom, one bath, not in the best area maybe, but it is all the way down to $1,900 a month. So that is a deal. So it's pretty accurate that for a two bedroom apartment or condo, you're gonna pay about $3,000 a month. You can get it a little bit cheaper if you're willing to sacrifice on some of the amenities or the location. Now let's look at the housing prices from September 2020. These are what I reported in that last video. As you can see, the average home price was 1.33 7 million. I'm actually going to focus on the median. Sorry, it's 1.242 in September 22 or 2020. So what is it like this September 2021? Um, I'm recording this video a little after that, but I wanted to do one year jump. It is up to 1.425 million, $183,000 increase in one year. So yes, buying a home has gotten a lot more expensive in San Jose. That is for sure. But just imagine if you would have bought a home a year ago, you would have had that much equity already. What? That's huge, right? Something you don't see in all kinds of areas. So 
Overall, the cost of living in San Jose is 68% higher than the national average. Yes, it is expensive. And it is cheaper still than San Francisco and New York, amazingly, but more expensive than many other areas. So depending on where you're coming from, San Jose is going to feel really expensive. So let's look quickly at the median home prices and costs to buy a home that I talked about in the last video. This is just a quick snapshot. I really want to focus on this next one where I've updated it with the 2021 median home prices. So the median home price in San Jose, which I pointed out earlier is 1.42. Interest rates are still about 3%, which I used in the video last time, but that's a $616 a month increase in the median home price just because the appreciation of homes. Now with San Jose condo has not appreciated very much. Uh, we were at 730,000 median and now it's at a 775,000 median. I think that is trailing a little bit because COVID allowed or forced people to think of their living situations and wanting more space. So not a lot of people were buying condos, so the demand was not quite as high, therefore it did not appreciate quite as much. So the cost of that only went up $25 a month, pretty amazing. Now Cambrian Park and Almaden Valley are two neighborhoods that are highly desirable with really good schools and a little bit nicer, larger homes. And those areas had some definite significant increases. Cambrian, not as much as San Jose average in general, but Almaden Valley, way above it, and that's because you get bigger lots, bigger homes, really good schools. So families were really feeling a cramped on their space, wanted to move to Almaden Valley. Just like I promised, how do people survive in San Jose? Well, the first thing is they're gonna buy a smaller property as soon as possible, as soon as they can afford a down payment to get in. And you don't have to have 10 per or 20% down payment, you can do 10% down payment, that's totally possible. The median home price, remember, was up 183,000 in one year. So where else can you get that kind of equity gain? So what people do in San Jose is buy a smaller home and move up later. Wait five, seven, 10 years and make their next move. Now you can also put a larger down payment because a lot of workers in this area have stock stock options or RSUs. So if you can put more than 20% down, you decrease that monthly payment and make it more affordable. And the third thing is most households I hinted to before are dual income. So if you both are in high tech, you definitely have a larger income and a larger proportion of that money can go towards your housing. So nowhere else can you see this kind of equity gain of 14 plus percent in one year. So yes, it's expensive to live in San Jose, but there are many benefits besides the weather to growing your wealth. So next I want you to watch the San Jose best neighborhood video because it'll give you an idea of what's available out there. Secondly, watch this video I just did about should you still buy a home in San Jose today? It's going to run through some of the numbers and give you an idea of really what it costs and what the benefits are like I hinted here with equity gain. All right, talk to you soon.